Airborne transmission means different things to different people. I think to the general public, it means that the virus is traveling through the air and you, get, you can get the disease. You, you don't have to touch someone. Um, to certain parts of the medical community, it means that it is happening over very long distances, like beyond a certain room. Um, I think about it as any time, any time a disease is transmitted by um, inhaling viruses or bacteria that are in droplets or aerosols, whatever you want to call them, but in, I, I get exposed by inhaling them through my nose or mouth into my respiratory system. And that's different from uh, what we call contact transmission, which is when we touch the virus um, on some surface or from somebody, some, we shake someone's hand, we pick it up from a doorknob, and then we, it gets into our body that way. Um, and there's some, there's debate too, I think the, the situation where if I'm close to someone and they cough in my face and the large droplets fly directly into my eye, that's actually not called airborne transmission, that's called contact transmission. Although to, to kind of the general public, they would think, oh, well, it's flying through the air, so that's airborne. But, but really, I think the best way to discriminate the different types of transmission is by the route of exposure, like whether you can breathe it in or whether it is touching your, you know, coming into contact with your body somehow. If you're in close contact with someone else who is infected, you're not guaranteed to, to get the disease. A lot of it would depend on your own immune system, but though that's outside my area of expertise, so I'll address the things that are, which is that, you know, are you getting exposed to enough of the virus? So first of all, do they shed enough virus? Some people shed more than others, like in terms of, uh, you know, in their, their body producing, their body having lots of virus and releasing it into the, into the air or, you know, through other means. Um, so do they release a lot of virus? If they don't, maybe you won't get it. Um, and then kind of how much are you exposed to? You know, if you're, if you're you know, in a well-ventilated building and you're not having long conversations with them um, face to face, the, the chances are lower. So it's not guaranteed that you're going to get it. Um, and then, so it kind of has, comes down to how much of the virus are you being exposed to and, and for how long also. Longer periods, of course, means that you're increasing your chance of getting it. So when students are, and, and faculty and staff are coming back to campus, you know, we definitely want to observe the, the guidelines of social distancing, wearing masks when we're indoors, um, avoiding crowded, overcrowding rooms. So, you know, a full classroom with everyone sitting shoulder to shoulder is probably not a good idea. For students, I know this is going to be tough, but you know, students, of course, want to socialize with others. They have big social networks. That's one of the, the pluses of coming to college. Um, but this is a time when the, you know, students need to think about doing their socializing at a greater distance, in smaller groups, outdoors rather than indoors. If you're not more than six feet from someone, it is still important to wear a mask because six feet is not some magical distance beyond which you are safe. Six feet is kind of a guideline. You know, the, the farther away you are, the better. So even if you are six feet away, there's still a chance that you can be exposed to virus. Um, you know, some people talk and project droplets farther than others. Um, and then there, there's also the idea of the kind of the aerosols, the smaller ones that you can't see, which can easily travel more than six feet. Um, so wearing a mask, I think, is always a good idea. Uh, you yourself may be infected without knowing it, and wearing a mask will help, help you prevent other people from getting infected, um, people you love, friends and family, and others. Um, and also, there's all, um, especially if you're in a room that has lots of people in it and there's poor ventilation, levels of virus can build up in the air, and that's where a mask can offer some protection too. If you're running or biking in a town like Blacksburg where you know, we don't have a lot of people, we don't have the population density of a city like New York or Washington, D.C., it's not like running through Rock Creek Park, um, I think it's fine to do it without a mask as long as you're not... Um, following right behind someone or running right in front of someone for a long time. Um, and, you know, I think the same thing for bicycling. I think if you want to do it with a small group of people, just maintain your distance. And I think it's a, a net benefit. So many unknowns about, about this virus and others. Uh, one of the big ones is, you know, how much virus is in different sized droplets that come out when we breathe or talk or sneeze. How well does that virus survive in those droplets and aerosols? Um, and kind of how does, it, how does it vary from one person to the next? 
uh, we see these super spreading events. And one thing that might contribute to those is that some people just shed a lot more virus than others. And you know, if there's a way to figure out what factors contribute to that, um, that, that could help us you know, get better control of, of the spread.